hello! My name is Mara and welcome to Books Like Woe. So I think I'm going to title this video something like My Low Buy Books and Consumerism and I, I'm going to reflect with you guys basically in this video about like why I'm doing a low buy with books right now, how that's going, and some of the things that I'm learning in that process. Now if you're looking at this video because you think that this is going to be about me griping about how booktube makes us all like shallow consumeristic dupes, that's not what this video is. I could make that, but like, honestly, I think so many of those have been made at this point and it's kind of boring and often coming from a place that I don't love. So I'm not gonna be making that video today, but I do wanna just talk about my own relationship with books and consumerism in the last year or two. And this is the other kind of caveat I should give is that this is going to be very personal to me. Like I'm gonna be talking about my experiences and sort of things that have been going on in my life and, and why I've been making some of the choices that I've been making. So like, if you don't wanna hear about me, also maybe this isn't the video for you. But with those disclaimers out of the way, I thought I would just talk to you guys about kind of why I'm doing a low buy and how it's going and all that good stuff. So first of all, I guess I should say, if you don't know what a low buy is, you, it's a term that's used sort of like in the internet firmament to kind of talk about a conscious limiting of your consumerism of a certain type of thing, sometimes all things. So like sometimes people will go on low or no buys. No buys are when you don't consume any of a certain product, but low or no buys of like anything, including like food, like people who will try to grow all their own food or make all their own clothes or whatever. Like there's different extremities, but you often see low buys or no buys being talked about in kind of like the beauty and fashion world of, of people having moments of like, you know what, I have a lot of stuff that's beauty or fashion related and I need to try to use and enjoy what I have and not just always be buying new things. I think I've sometimes seen these alluded to on booktube, but any of the kind of online communities that have to do with consumption in some way, this could be something that's applicable to it. So I decided to do a low buy for at least the first half of 2019 and kind of the the way I was thinking about this in terms of like my rules are I need to I want to focus what buying I am doing into collections so thinking about buying books that are a part of like my penguin cloth bound collection or my everyman's like things that I've been wanting for a long time that I've been working on like you know, making lists of and, and thinking about buying and that it's a part of an overall kind of conscious purchase, as well as uh, any pre-orders for books that were coming out that I knew that I would want to read in pretty short order. Essentially, my low buy was kind of trying to focus myself away from a mindset of constant acquisitiveness when it comes to books. And we'll talk in a little bit about why I think I've been doing that a little bit. But basically, kind of the heart and the spirit of this low buy is just because you hear about a book in passing doesn't mean you need to buy it, even if it's a great price or even if it's whatever. It doesn't, just because you are thinking about reading something doesn't mean that you need to physically bring it into your home, especially given the fact that we have access to like a library. Like I have access to multiple libraries. They are great collections in there. It's not never, but rarely do I have a situation where I cannot get access to a book if I really want it. So um, that is sort of like the rules or whatever of my low buy is focusing on my collections and focusing away from kind of a, a constant eye out for looking for things to buy, rather focusing on things that I already know that I want to buy at some point, if that makes sense. That's that's kind of like how I've been thinking about this. And in terms of why I wanted to do this, I think that, um, so this is where we start getting to the more personal part. So for me, this is not primarily like a financial decision, though that was not like completely out of it, because I actually am an extremely frugal person in most parts of my life, like to, to the point where like people make fun of me about it because I'll agonize about spending like $5 on like a latte. When it comes to books, that's like really honestly one of my only areas where I'm just like, like whatever, <laughs> I'm not thinking about that. But in general, I'm a very frugal person. So I am very comfortable with the amount of money that I am or have been spending on books in terms of living within my means, because I'm not somebody like, you know, I have a nice income. And also I'm not that way really about any other kind of category of consumer good. For me, this was not something primarily driven by financials. Also, just to be totally honest, I'm finally to the point in booktube where I'm making a little bit of money from AdSense and then I've, I've got some sponsors 
ship things coming up that you guys will be hearing about. So I'm making a little bit of money enough that I think it would cover most of what I would think of as my book budget and also cover my expenses for lighting or whatever for booktube. So for me, financially, this was not, that was not the primary driver though. I think that if you find yourself in a situation where you are not comfortable with the amount of money that you're spending on books or bookish related things, that's something you really need to be honest with yourself about. Like I, you know, I've definitely had moments, especially when, for instance, when I was in grad school where I really like looked myself in the eye and was like, you have a library and that's what you're going to need to use because like it is not responsible for you to be buying new books all of the time unless they're for school or whatever and you really need them. So for me, that was not my primary driver. For me, this is much more about sort of like my relationship with consumerism overall and how books have become kind of like my main focus for my acquisitive consumeristic thirst that is never ending and is designed to be never ending by kind of the macro systems of uh, consumerism and capitalism that are that are working on us. And I think that the reason that I wanted to kind of focus on, in on this this year is because I recognized towards the end of last year that I've been using books and before that makeup, and maybe I need to back up a little bit and give some biography here, but I've been using them to kind of get through some hard times. And I don't necessarily think that that was bad, but I also think that that relationship with physical things is not something that I want to sustain long term. So let me tell you a little bit about what I mean about that. So when I came out, like, again, this is where it's getting very biographical. So if you don't care about this, fair enough, but that's what this video is. So when I came out of grad school, so my, my degree is in religion. And a lot of why I went to grad school is because I was essentially having sort of like an existential crisis of faith and kind of the meaning of life and all of that. I'm really thankful for that experience. It was very formative for me and, and really necessary, I think, for my long-term mental and emotional spiritual health. But when I came out of it, I had a very different relationship to faith than I had coming in. And that sent me into sort of a year of, of real transition, of rethinking of how I conceptualize my selfhood. And that was a really challenging time because I was also coming back into the workforce after being out for three years and in a new city where I really didn't know very many people. And, you know, I was working through it and I was getting to a pretty good place. And literally right when I was like, yeah, you know what? Like I'm, I'm really kind of getting in the groove of things. It had been about a year. I was like, okay, I kind of have settled in like the, the, on the anniversary of me moving to the city I was in, which was Charlotte at the time, my best friend in that city passed away very unexpectedly from like a freak thing. And that was, I think a day or two before the 2016 election. And, <laughs> and then a couple months later, my father was diagnosed with a, a very serious cancer. And so that, so I moved from a time of kind of like transition, like what is even going on? to a time that really is only ending like now-ish of like grief and loss and processing my own mortality and processing like kind of how I think about those things in light of a new relationship to faith and kind of how I think about metaphysics. Like it's just been a real transition time. Also in that time, things like, you know, I found keto. So like I, I'm in physically a lot better shape, but you know, kind of my relationship to my own health and body and awareness of that changed a lot. I moved cities. I moved from, you know, I'd moved to Charlotte and then I moved from Charlotte to Nashville. So I'm closer to my family and I'm also closer to a lot of longer term friends. So it's kind of a different community support now. A lot of change and a lot of kind of thinking through big questions and what do I really want to do with my life and why am I here and what, you know, what do I want to make of the time that I have? So in the midst of that, <laughs> I think it was probably in the scheme of things a pretty healthy and normal um, crutch for me to rely a little bit on consumerism to sort of like ease some of the emotional tensions that I had going on. Specifically, I started with like makeup because I was so anxious in the morning for that first year. And then especially after my friend passed away and my dad was sick, I was so anxious that like having a specific makeup routine and like practicing things and like getting into skincare, all of that was really helpful to sort of like center me in the morning and in the evening, kind of in these sort of liminal spaces in our day of like, okay, like you're kind of, doing your makeup is basically coloring for adults. So like <laughs> you're coloring on your face. So like having something like specific and skilled to focus on. And then, you know, like you're, you know, kind of touching your face and kind of grounding yourself in the moment in a lot of ways. So like that was kind of where first 
my consumeristic thirst was channeled. So I got really into makeup. I bought like in retrospect far too much of it. And now I'm, I'm not even on an enforced low slash no buy with makeup. I just don't want any more. Like I have what I need. I figured out the things that I like. I repurchase things that I run out of that I like, but I'm not like trying to get more, more, more. But that was really like the focus of it at first. And I think as I, you know, was thinking about moving and also just realized like I had figured out a lot of what I liked and, and really becoming kind of convicted and aware of sort of the waste factor of it, that I was buying these things that I wasn't to try them because that was the only way to try them. And then I wouldn't like them and I wouldn't use them and the environmental impact of the packaging and, and just all of it. I, I think I just got to the point where I was like, oh, I don't really like this. So I started kind of redirecting a lot of that and that kind of acquisitive thirst and never ending hunger for things that was, I think, provide, like I said, providing a nice distraction and providing kind of something, I think even just like the process of looking for things to buy is sort of a soothing in between moment thing to do. Like if you have 10 minutes in between doing a couple of things, that can be sort of a mindless way to sort of like, oh, I've been thinking about, you know, getting some new towels. Like, oh, I wonder like what's, you know, do you know what I mean? Like it just sort of is, it's empty time to fill in a way that is soothing. And so coming out of makeup, I, I then switched into sort of my old faithful, which is books because I never stopped buying books, but I had been, just because of the genres that I've been interested in, in the previous years, I'd been reading a lot of romance and my preferred um, format for romance is ebooks, like anything that you would normally get in a mass market paperback, I prefer to have as an ebook. So I had still been buying a lot of books, but they were ebooks, they were cheaper, they don't take up physical space, that you can get a lot of great deals on them. And that that's always been a hobby of mine since I got into ebooks is sort of like, wheeling and dealing and finding, you know, how to get things for cheaper for free. And so you know, I'd been doing that, but then I think as I got on booktube and reminded myself that I like a lot of different things, and actually I'm really thankful to booktube for that because I think I'd gotten so in a rut of just like, cause I'd done my thesis on romance. So I, I kind of was having a hard time branching back out into all these other genres I really like. But as I was being reminded of that through the process of booktube and um, I found like book outlet and book depository, it reminded me of how much I like buying physical books. So I think I started sort of shifting some of my acquisitiveness into that realm. And so I noticed it somewhat in the beginning of 2018, but honestly, like as my father was in a much better place health wise, and I was in a new city, so I was in a better mental place, things like were, I think, kind of resolving themselves a little bit. Like I was kind of, you know, I was definitely buying a lot of books, but it, it didn't have the same emotional kind of relevance to me in kind of the early part of 2018. But then actually like a week after the year of him being in remission, my dad got the flu while he was traveling abroad. And because his immune system was completely destroyed by the whole process of having chemo, he died like within a week from that. It was very sudden. It was very traumatic to be totally honest, like because it went from, you know, we were the last time I saw him in normal circumstances, we were celebrating his birthday and the fact that he had just gotten his one year bill of health and that he was cleared to travel and that like things were like he was in like the 99 percentile of recovery, like, we were all confident we were going to have at least another probably like 10 years with him. We went from that right before they left to like, in a week, my first week at a new job that is very intense rushing home twice, first time thinking I wasn't going to make it the second time. And, but then like him rebounding and then the second time getting there and getting there in time, you know, that I needed to, but then he didn't rebound. And, and that whole thing was very traumatic just in terms of like the up and down sadness and then also the grief. And I think from that, I really changed my emotional relationship with buying books from that point forward. Also because I was in this new job that was really intense and like, a lot to deal with. And I was thinking about buying a new house, which I'm now in and like, there's just a lot going on. And I needed that emotional crutch again with books. This has been so much longer than I thought it would be. I hope you guys aren't bored by this. We'll see how much I edit this down. Because I feel like I'm just in therapy with you. I have my own therapist, I promise that I'm actually dealing with this. And I'm trying to reflect this. And I'm trying to be honestly, I'm trying to be honest, because I think that anyway, we'll get there. I'm just this is a long tangent. I know, but I promise I'm going somewhere with it. But I really noticed <laughs> And from the point where he passed through to 
the end of 2018. And I think I even said this in several videos of like, I am emotionally buying these, like this is what I'm doing right now because I'm sad. And I was aware of it, but I think especially coming out of Christmas and like with all the Black Friday deals, all the end of the year slash Boxing Day deals, and just seeing how many books came in in such a short order, it really was kind of a click of me to me of like, okay, let's try to redirect this. So in terms of <laughs> what I'm taking away from this in my low buy and sort of like what I've learned so far and kind of where I see this going. One, I think that I've realized that books are a p p uh, particularly potent consumer anecdote to feelings of existential uncertainty because they represent time in a lot of ways. Like when you buy some fancy towels or if you buy like fancy makeup or whatever, you're not necessarily buying time in the same way that you feel like you are with books. Like you're buying uh, something aesthetic and you're buying so like an experience, I guess, somewhat. Like you're buying the experience of feeling fancy using it, but it's in kind of a time box window. When you buy a book, depending on the length of it, you're buying six to 12 to 24 hours of time that you're going to invest in this book. And I do think I realized that like feeling grief and like being in a place of reflecting on my own mortality and whatever, buying a lot of big chunks of time, I think it's not a coincidence that that was what I chose to do in the midst of that, because it felt like saying like, well, I can't die until I've read these, <laughs> all of these books, which is absurd. And I don't think I'm conscious, like that's not what I'm actually doing, but I do think on some level, it's like, these are all the possibilities of time spent that I'm buying. And I do think that there was something significant about the fact that that was what I was choosing to buy. The second is, I think I've become much more aware of the cycle of wanting to want things and how that fills, fills an emotional void and how really we're so trained um, as consumers, at least in the industrial world, to want things and to learn how to want to want things. Like there's a very specific emotional cycle and relationship between wanting to want something, finding something to want, investigating it or going through the process of getting it and then having it. Like that is a very specific life cycle. And for books, because one of my hobbies is trying to find them cheap, like that process gets prolonged even more. So like when I have a book on my wish list that has never been under $12 and one day it goes down to nine, the emotional kick I get out of that is even more potent. And I think that I've been more attuned to the fact that that is something that I am doing with my book purchases and just conscious of it. Like, I don't know what I'm gonna do with that, but I think just having that awareness of like, there's a specific emotional roller coaster that I'm on with this hobby and I just wanna be aware of it. And third, I think that sometimes I've had worries that I have like an unstoppable desire for books <laughs> that like I couldn't stop buying them if I didn't want to. And I think even just having this two month kind of refresh or like reset mode of like having very specific purchases that I'm making and not just sort of mentally giving myself carte blanche to get whatever I want, I think has been a good reminder to me that I am not somebody who is addicted to shopping because everything that I'm talking about, I should say, doesn't apply to somebody who is actually has a shopping addiction. I am not compulsively buying things. And I think it was good to remind myself that there is a distinction between something that is maybe kind of an emotional crutch versus something that is pathological or like really unhealthy. And I also think that it's been a good reminder to me because I think I sometimes, I, I'm somebody who is very like, I, I'm like a little squirrel. I like all my acorns in the form of money. Like I want to hold on to things. I actually think that having book buying be something where I'm pretty like loose with my coins is actually something that is good for me because in every other area, I'm such a Taiwan <laughs> that I think having a place where I allow myself to be reckless with money and not even because I'm still staying in a budget, but like that I don't l allow myself to feel really like tense about the money that I'm spending is actually something good for me because it helps me be, it helps me practice um, not being that way in other areas. Like I find 
when I'm allowing myself to have certain areas where I, I kind of don't have that mentality in terms of how I spend my money, it helps me be more generous in general. So like, I'm not as worried about like, oh, I don't wanna go out with my friends because I don't wanna spend the money. Like I have just generally more of an ability to put perspective in terms of where I do and don't need to be being frugal. Because I, this is a weird relationship, but I have noticed that when I'm allowing myself to spend what I want on books in particular, I'm also much more likely to have a better social life. Like I'm much more likely to be like, ah, yeah, let's go have lunch or let's go do this or let's go do that. Because I think it, I don't know, it's a weird correlation, but I, I think generally just having these last two months to refresh has been a good reminder to me of like where book buying fits into my overall spending habits and how I think about money and how I think about acquiring things or not acquiring things like it's I think just refreshed my sort of like normal like it's gotten me back to normal that's probably the way to say it of like getting me back to a place where I'm kind of a little more in balance in terms of how I'm relating to my money and relating to my things and relating to my like experiences I don't know if any of that made sense but that is the third thing I've realized so all of that to say I felt like I wanted to put this on here because I do do book hauls pretty much every month and I enjoy them like I enjoy buying books I enjoy watching other people buy books I don't think that there's anything wrong with that I also do though just feel like it is incumbent upon me as somebody who makes those to kind of talk at some points about like the way that those purchases fit into my overall life it can't and maybe this is the point where i do have a slight moment of moralizing about consumerism on booktube i couldn't get it through this whole video without having a little bit of that i do think that it's easy for you to see me buying beautiful books because i do i buy very beautiful penguin cloth bound classics on the regular like i buy nice editions of things you can see me doing that and have a certain idea about what that means about me in terms of my financial situation, in terms of like my overall aesthetic or who I like, or my character or who I am, or like what this means about the time that I have or don't have. Like there can be a lot of sort of not even maybe conscious assumptions about what those purchases mean about me as a person. And again, I think that's just kind of a part of how we're taught in, an, in the consumerist societies that we live in to relate to each other like there's specific consumer relationships that we form with each other and not just with brands like we see each other as consumers in a certain way if that makes sense like we all have ideas about who each other are as consumers so i think if i'm putting myself out there and having specific things i'm presenting to you guys about who i am as a consumer it's important for me to also have some level of reflection or some level of honesty about how i think about myself as a consumer and how that changes over time and how i'm growing and learning to be a better and smarter consumer or at least i think it, i i think my goal because i just don't really see a way out of this hamster wheel of like <laughs> consumption at this point for me personally but also just as like i don't i don't know where we're going with this as a culture but for for what i what i can do at least is be try to be conscious of it try to be an observer of my own emotional and my own um, kind of mental states when i'm engaging in certain kinds of consumerism and to try to be honest with you guys about that because you are witnesses to it and i am in some way even if it's itty bitty bitty if you if you are watching this you i am in some way influencing or contributing to your mental landscape when it comes to these topics i don't know what this is going to look like when i edit it together this might have just been the most na navel gazy pretentious uninteresting video ever i have no idea i like i said i do this because i feel like i have a responsibility to do it but i i just wanted to put this out there because i felt like it's a discussion i want us to move away from just having these discussions about consumerism on booktube that are focused on like book hauls are good or book hauls are bad and just acknowledge that it's like a more complicated thing and like that we all have complicated relationships to buying things. That's just what it boils down to. So yeah, we'll see how this gets edited together. I'm not sure if I'm gonna leave comments on for this. Pro I, may I probably will, but I'm gonna like disable the shit out of them if, it if anybody's being nasty to me about this. <laughs> like I just will unapologetically do that. So we'll see how things go. I'll keep an eye on it. And if I have to uh, hide more than one or two users from channel, I may just give up and turn off comments on this. So we'll see how it goes, but. All that being said, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you are still watching it, congratulations. If you did, please like, subscribe, follow me on the social medias if you are so inclined. I have all that information listed in the description box below. And I think that that will do it.
I hope you guys are having a really lovely day and I will just talk to you soon. Bye.